To find out if his disability affected his livelihood, Kelly is visiting the Washington County Archives to meet genealogist Josh Taylor. Ooh, I'm so excited. So you're looking at a family folder, which okay. is basically a folder of documents gathered by potential other relatives, people who've visited and done research here, mm -hmm. all about Isaiah Rose. Oh, cool. Okay. The Leader, Marriott, Ohio, Tuesday, August 31st, 1886. So he'd be about 43, 44 by now? Sheriff Rose, during his official career, that can't be him, right? Or... What do you think? He's a sheriff? He's, he's like Tombstone? He's a sheriff? <laughs> what does that mean? I'm so excited. Oh my god, okay, wait. So say we, Sheriff Rose, during his official career the past two years, has made hosts of friends. He believes that public office is a public trust. That he will be re-elected by a larger majority than two years ago is a conclusion accepted by both political parties. So sometime around 1884, he <sighs> ran for office. He ran to become the county sheriff, won the election. So now he's being re-elected. Because he's so popular. <laughs> right on. All right, the Daily Register, Marietta, Ohio, Wednesday, November 8th, 1905. So he's probably in 63, 64. Mm -hmm. OK. Oh my gosh, is this his picture? Oh my god, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that was his picture. Oh my gosh, that's what he looked like. Senator I.R. Senator? He was a senator? Mm hmm. State senator. I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't. Late advises from the district show the election of the Republican candidate for Senate, Isaiah R. Rose. This is Lincoln's party. I mean, he's a state senator as part of Lincoln's party. Oh my gosh. So he fought for Lincoln as a kid, like grew up, became a man in the military in the Civil War, then back to the same party, just still believing in the Union, and became a senator, a state senator. I could not be more proud of this man. What in the world? And you can just see in his eyes in this picture, like what a life. Oh my goodness. So is there a way to find out like what he was a part of, like politically, like what kind of laws he was a part of, or? Absolutely. So the next step, uh, you can visit a colleague of mine actually in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, okay. After the state house there. And, and keep in mind when you're there, you'll be walking literally in his footsteps. Well, I can't wait to find out. Oh my goodness. Thank well, you very too. much, Josh. <laughs> I just love how much drive I'm seeing. I mean, he was this young kid in the war and he's shot, he has a bum leg and he just still was a survivor. And then worked his way up, you know, to be a sheriff and then a senator. I'm very driven and I think that's because of my family. And it's cool to find out how far back that strength comes from. I'm really just curious to know what laws we got behind because I'm very, you know, hardcore in my beliefs and I hope I, I can stand behind, you know, what he believed in politically as well. Kelly is heading back to Columbus, to the Ohio State House, where she's meeting political historian Tom Pegram. Tom has been doing some research on Isaiah Rose's Senate career. Would you be interested in seeing his office? Oh, definitely, yes, please, well, let's yeah. Let's go, let's go yeah. see it. All right, is it this way, okay. I can't believe I'm gonna see like where his office was, that's yeah. so cool. This, this was his office, this is where he worked. Thank you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, not too shabby. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. This is like extremely intimidating. I sing in front of people all the time, but I would be scared to death to talk in this room. <laughs> this is where he sat uh, in 1906 at the beginning of his three year term as senator. That is so weird that I'm like sitting in a room where he was. That's super weird. <laughs> so is there any way to find out like around that time, like what laws he, he was, you know, for or like what he was trying to pass or what kind of legislation he was involved in? These are newspapers from Ohio in the early part of the 20th century. Okay. Those are the best records of political debate and political issues in the state. The repository, Friday, March 1906. So this is pretty early on in his political career. Yes. It's like freshman year. Yes. Okay. Hot talk from Rose, Senator Rose of Washington County, the strongest temperance advocate 
in the Senate. What is the temperance? The temperance movement at this time was a large movement in Ohio and elsewhere to restrict or even eliminate the liquor industry. Oh. So he's a part of the people that don't want liquor. He is indeed a part of that. Oh, hiccup in the ancestry department. <laughs> so he's like trying to wipe out all liquor. Uh, actually saloons, retail saloons. They didn't attack individual drinkers so much. The idea was <gasps> that the liquor industry and that saloons were for men mainly. Women were generally not allowed. Yeah. Uh, Paychecks were cashed in saloons, and men spent a lot of time drinking in saloons. There was a great deal of domestic violence that accompanied drinking. This was also seen as a women's issue. The argument was the saloon then was hampering their family life, their children's lives, health, safety. Well, right on. I'm glad he's for women. That's awesome. Senator Rose several weeks ago introduced a county option bill. So what is the county option bill? County option gets the issue down to the local level. It allows the people themselves to decide whether they want to regulate saloons or not. Okay, Thursday morning, February 27th, 1908. Yes, this is the last year of his term. He has yeah. to act. I bet he's pushing hard, okay. After more than two hours debate, the House this evening passed the county option bill introduced and championed by Senator Isaiah R. Rose of Washington County the measure will now go to the governor, and it is generally expected that he will sign it. Oh my gosh, he actually got it to pass. He actually got it through the legislature. Yeah. Now it's up to the governor. There would be a ceremony here. There would be a lot of rejoicing from the temperance people. It would go to the governor's desk. The governor was cooperative, and he did sign it. He did. Yes. That is so exciting, and he's a freshman senator, you know, when he started this. Yep. And being a freshman senator, I'm imagining that would have been unheard they're, of. They're usually very unassuming. They don't rock the boat. Yeah. Uh, he put a motor on the boat. I love it. He has fire. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm imagining, since he is a freshman senator and he was kind of rocking the boat, he made a lot of enemies on the other side. How do you know, like, if he, you know, continued in his political career? Did he get reelected? Well, let's see. The Marion Weekly Star, Saturday, November 11th, 1908. So November, so this is election time. Senator Rose down and out. Ooh, not a good headline. The official count is in for the 9th and 14th districts, and Senator I.R. Rose, father of the Rose County option bill, is defeated. Semi-official returns proclaimed Rose's election, but the count beats him by 32. Not a lot. So wait, it's saying that people thought he won. So they were already saying, like, congratulations. The original, the original reports were that he had won, they were celebrating, and then the formal count came out and he had lost by, you know, <gasps> less than three dozen votes. Oh, my goodness. Isaiah Rose became the particular target of the organized liquor industry and its supporters. They pooled their resources and they got him out of office. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is it doesn't surprise me that he went down fighting for something he believed in because he kind of had that whole pass. You know, he definitely was the guy that, like, stood up for what he believed in and fought for it. So what did he do now? Well, we have one oh, more document. Washington County, Ohio to 1980. The grandparent I remember best was Isaiah R. Rose. So this is just like an account book of people, like, putting together all their knowledge? Yes. Of their families? Local communities would do that. Oh, my gosh. Isaiah R. Rose family. So that's Isaiah Rose right here? Yes, it is. In the middle? Oh, my goodness. In 1866, he married Melissa Ellen Crawford. They made their home in Colrun and raised a family of seven children. Man, they had some kids, didn't they? Yes, Woo. they did. His death came on Thanksgiving Day, November 26th, 1916, at his home. He lies in historic Round Bottom Cemetery near Colrun. Wow. That's Colrun, Washington County. That's not far from here, no, right? No, that's not far. It's, it's outside of Marietta. Well, this is his story. I just finished it up. Thank you so much. Like, now I know, like, where he's buried, and I would really love to go see it. All right. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Oh. Good day. It's cool to know and, and really eat that with my family that my three times great-grandfather did not abandon anything. 
You know, he, he was so relentless in, in his morals and in his beliefs. It makes me feel just really proud and, and know why, you know, I stand up for things. It's because it's in my blood.